when attorney Omero Lopez needs to meet in person with clients held in immigration detention, he has to make long drives from his home in New Orleans. If you do a day trip, you're talking about six to eight hours of drive, not including the time that you're physically there. His nonprofit, Immigration Services and Legal Advocacy, provides free legal representation for migrants detained in Louisiana. And with more and more detention centers being opened in rural areas, he spends a lot of time in his car. There's a limited amount of people who are doing the detained cases in Louisiana because it is, there are so far, so rural, so difficult to, to get to and to handle. Most of Lopez's clients are at the Pine Prairie Ice Processing Center. It's 180 miles northwest of New Orleans and holds up to 1,094 detainees. Though it's a federal facility, it's run and staffed by GEO Group, a private prison company that contracts with the U.S. government. GEO declined our request to tour the detention center, but we were permitted to enter the visitation area and meet some of Lopez's clients. 32-year-old Christian de Leon has been in ICE custody for 14 months. A native of Guatemala, de Leon came to the U.S. on a work visa, which has since expired. He was living in Alabama with his fiancé and their three children and working in construction. How did you end up here in ICE detention in Louisiana? I had a small car accident and the police came to help me and then they arrested me. De Leon was charged with driving under the influence. He says when his fiance came to pay his bond, the police wouldn't let her. They said that ICE was already coming for me. ICE issued a deportation order, which De Leon is appealing. Meanwhile, he married his fiance, an American citizen, in a brief prison ceremony. He's now applying for a green card as her spouse. De Leon is not typical of Lopez's clients. Most have applied for asylum because they feared for their lives in their home country, like 36-year-old Jamal Jamal, who came to the U.S. from Pakistan. He says he had fallen in love with a woman whose family had arranged a marriage for her with another man. When the woman told her family she wanted to marry Jamal instead, they killed her. A tribal council then ordered Jamal's execution, so he fled the country. What do you think will happen if you are deported back to Pakistan? And my... He killed me. On arrival in the U.S., he asked for asylum. He's been in ICE detention for 11 months as his case makes its way through immigration court. Katie Schwartzman is legal director of the American Civil Liberties Union in Louisiana. She says that migrants like Jamal, who enter the U.S. legally seeking asylum and demonstrate a credible fear of returning to their home country, should be released on bond. They're entitled to consideration for something that our immigration law calls humanitarian parole, which means um, the right to remain out in the community in the United States as ICE considers whether the grant of asylum is appropriate. ICE's regional office in New Orleans is responsible for five southern states, including Louisiana. As recently as 2016, under the Obama administration, it approved parole for almost 76 percent of asylum cases. Under the Trump administration, that number has plunged to 1.5 percent. The ACLU and the Southern Poverty Law Center have filed suit against the Department of Homeland Security. They allege that ICE's New Orleans office is categorically denying parole to asylum seekers in a, quote, violation of DHS's own directive and guidelines. A federal judge agreed, noting in September that the number of parole approvals had dropped to 0% in 2019. He ruled that DHS must consider granting parole to detainees seeking asylum. The government is appealing the ruling. ICE officials say parole is designed to be narrowly applied. Brian Cox is acting press secretary. Uh, the reality is, is that if people could show up at the border, make a claim and be released into the interior of the United States, not everyone will then appear in court. And so detention in some instances is a necessary use of resources to ensure that persons do in fact appear in court. But over the past year, ICE has held more migrants in detention than ever before. And many are here in Louisiana. Last year, there were two prisons holding about 2,500 ICE detainees. 
Now there are 11 holding almost 9,000 people. Detained migrants are less likely to win asylum than those who await trial on the outside. Omero Lopez's clients are among the lucky few who have legal representation. Días, Dixon. ¿Cómo está? On this day, Lopez is meeting with Dixon Hernandez Naranjo via video conference. Not all detention centers allow the practice. They're trying to prepare for the tough questioning Hernandez will face in an asylum hearing the next day. In his native Cuba, Hernandez was a tour guide. He says government officials accused him of speaking unpatriotically to tourists and jailed him repeatedly for what he calls thought crimes. While in ICE detention at Pine Prairie, Hernandez participated in a hunger strike. He says he and his fellow protesters were being unfairly incarcerated. We're not criminals. We just simply want to fight for our rights, like anybody who comes to seek asylum. He was placed in solitary confinement for his participation and missed a meeting with Lopez. Now they are having one last session before the hearing. Bueno, nos vemos ahí por la mañana, eh? The next morning, Lopez makes a three and a half hour drive to Oakdale, a small town in central Louisiana, which is mostly comprised of a strip of chain stores. Tucked inside a federal correctional complex is the nondescript Oakdale Immigration Court. It handles all cases for migrants detained at Pine Prairie. Lopez is here to present Hernandez's asylum case. He's hopeful, but he knows the odds are not in his client's favor. Our judges have a very low approval rate for relief for asylum in particular, and um, we just don't see a lot of wins, unfortunately. From 2013 to 2018, judges at this court denied asylum nearly 90 percent of the time. But Lopez and his law partner, Al Page, have beaten the odds lately. They won five out of eight asylum cases while we were in Louisiana. Among the wins, Dixon Hernandez Naranjo. <laughs> we caught up with him at the bus station in New Orleans shortly after he was released from detention. Hernandez says he's grateful to be out in what he calls a country with freedom. But he says the treatment he received in detention, especially in solitary confinement, was not what he expected in the United States. I had the same experience when I've been in the hole. It was like the same experience when I've been in the hole in Cuba. Maybe more dangerous than Cuba. Jamal Jamal and Christian de Leon remain in ICE detention. A judge recently denied Jamal's application for asylum. He decided to appeal the decision rather than be deported immediately. De Leon has fallen ill and is being tested for a heart condition. Jackson Parish is typical of northern Louisiana. Rural, quiet, conservative, and close-knit. Also typical are shuttered stores, a symptom of a stagnant economy, and the struggle to employ people. One reliable employer has been the Jackson Parish Correctional Center. The jail is operated by LaSalle Corrections, a local private prison company. But it's managed and under the jurisdiction of the Sheriff's Department. Andy Brown was elected Sheriff of Jackson Parish in 2003. One of the things that I faced when I took over, we had a jail that was built in 1936. The conditions were uh, horrible. And I knew I had to close that jail and try to come up with something that would benefit our parish. So he reached out to LaSalle Corrections. After many meetings, many discussions, a lot of negotiation, we agreed that uh, LaSalle would come here and build this facility. They built a jail with capacity to hold 600 inmates, and later more than doubled that. The population of Jackson Parish is about 15,000. So why does a parish your size need a jail? Somewhere? Well, it, it necessarily did not need a jail this size. Uh, but in our negotiations with LaSalle Management, I wanted a parish jail. And one thing that I have to tell you, this prison did not cost the taxpayers any money. LaSalle Management come in and built this. And, uh, you know, they're going to build it on a scale to where it fits their needs, not necessarily mine. They're in the business of making money. I'm not necessarily in the business of making money. I'm in the business of making sure this operates right and it carries on and like it's supposed to. Historically, Louisiana has been known as America's incarceration capital. Overcrowding in its prisons has led the state to rely on local sheriffs, 
working in partnership with for-profit companies. Together, they've built large facilities to house more than half of the state's prisoners. The way that we pay local sheriffs is on a per diem system, which means that they're paid per head per day for each individual that they house. Katie Schwartzman is legal director for the American Civil Liberties Union in Louisiana. Well, that incentivizes economically incarcerating the most people that you can and saving as much money as you can on things like services and basic provisions. The arrangement has provided a boost to economically depressed rural communities while increasing profits for the private companies. But in 2017, Louisiana enacted prison reforms that led to a dramatic decrease in the number of state prisoners behind bars. Now, many of the cells are being used by ICE. The agency pays the Jackson Parish Sheriff's Department $74 a day for each migrant detainee. That's about three times what the state pays to house someone convicted of a crime. Though the $74 does cover some added ICE requirements, including translators and additional health care providers, it's been a windfall here. When the per diem comes to the sheriff's office and I turn around and cut LaSalle management a check, then LaSalle management pays me. They reimburse me for all the benefits, for all the salaries of all these employees, uh, plus I make uh, some money uh, off of fees and such. And when you say you make money, that you're able to finance your law enforcement operation through through this, or, or what do you mean? I have about a $5 million budget at my sheriff's office, and um, this year we will probably uh, profit $750,000 uh, from the jail. And Brown says there are other economic benefits. I, I've been able to create over 200 jobs and that's very meaningful in, in our parish. And uh, these jobs, uh, not only the pay, but they, they get health benefits. And uh, so I'm proud of that fact. What Sheriff Brown sees as a boon to the community troubles the ACLU's Katie Schwartzman. Our local sheriffs have figured out that they can make more money on housing ICE detainees than they can on housing um, convicted Louisiana prisoners. So there's some people that say, um, like, you're, you're profiting off of um, incarcerating people. What do you say to people who say that? Uh, I've got mixed emotions about that. I, I do understand why somebody would say that. And, uh, uh, you know, again, I'm not in it for the profit. I'm in it to better the area where I live. ICE says its arrangement with Louisiana benefits federal taxpayers. Brian Cox is acting press secretary. The average cost of detention in ICE custody is around $126 a day. The average in Louisiana is about $65 a day. Ann Cox says there's a reason ICE contracts with local sheriffs and prison companies. If ICE were to build and operate a network of detention facilities, ICE would have to staff those facilities, build those facilities. The cost to the taxpayer would be significant. Uh, with a contract arrangement, that allows ICE to bring on more beds as needed, reduce beds as needed. On the day we visited Jackson Parish Correctional Center, 972 beds were occupied by ICE detainees. We met three who each entered the U.S. at legal points of entry and requested asylum. All are gay men from Central America. They say they were persecuted by gangs, often violently, and met with indifference by the police. 23-year-old Sergio Gomez is from El Salvador. I've had a lot of problems with the gangs because of my sexual preference. He's been in ICE detention for nine months, which he says is especially trying as a gay man. It's real hard to be locked up in a dorm with 100 men. We don't have privacy. We all take showers together. We're ashamed and embarrassed. The ACLU's Katie Schwartzman says that what concerns her about using jails to detain migrants awaiting asylum hearings is that they're being treated as criminals. Immigration detainees are civil detainees. They're not accused of any crime. Um, they don't have a right to a lawyer in the way that somebody on the criminal side is because it's treated as a civil infraction. Now you have those civil detainee folks being housed in the exact same conditions of confinement that historically we've housed um, people who are convicted of criminal offenses in Louisiana. I raise that concern with Sheriff Brown. And I understand that. And um, I still think 
that we're a nation of laws, and we've got to we've got to protect our borders. We've got to secure our borders. I don't know that a wall is the answer. Uh, and uh, I hate to say this, but incarceration may be. Whatever the case, incarceration will continue to fuel the economies of towns like Sheriff Brown's if Sergio Gomez is any indication. If you could do it again, would you still try to seek asylum? I'd rather be locked up because I cannot return back. You would rather be in jail here than, than go back home? I prefer to be locked up than return back to my country.